Hello and welcome to Monster Train. Monster Train is a strategic roguelike deck builder and it has overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam and I am very much anticipating playing this. This is the first time I have booted it up so it is going to be a first time experience for both of us. Unless you've seen something else from someone else. Anyway. The train is carrying precious cargo, the last remaining shard of the pyre, needed to relight the fires in the depths of hell. Invaders from heaven, the winged, will do anything to prevent you from completing your journey. You must make wise decisions and build up your band of monsters to have any hope of success. Good luck, Hellborn. All right, let's do it. Okay, so I have no idea what's going on, so we're going to have to learn very quickly on the fly. All right, so we have Heaven's Priests here wanting to attack us. These disciples have dedicated themselves to the service of Heaven and will attempt to restore the life of their companions. And a variety of other people, apparently. All right, so we have verticality. That's one thing that I have seen quite a bit of in the game. Uh, there's a lot of different areas that people can attack from, potentially. Not entirely sure yet. This is your pyre. If it takes too much damage from enemy attacks, your run is over. And I assume, yes, as you can see, they do enter at the lowest level and move up one level every turn. If they reach the top, they'll attack your pyre. But hopefully, we will be able to prevent them from getting there. Now, bear in mind that I have so far seen that the game itself has a huge amount of variety in what you can do in terms of your deck. And uh, there are some really, really powerful things that you can do that feel very satisfying. And uh, obviously I have not done those because this is the first time I'm playing, but you know, hopefully we'll be able to get there. Summon units to defend your train. So we, there we go, we're actually going to be summoning the Hornbreaker Prince. And each floor of the train has limited capacity. The amount of space is indicated by these little pips on the top left of the screen right there. So we can actually do two damage. I'm going to do two damage to that guy back there so we can eliminate him because he's very, very low in HP. And uh, I guess I might want to spawn a train steward. I actually don't know whether the positioning really makes a huge difference. But we'll just do that. And then I will end the turn. I don't know whether... Is your... Ah, maybe your ember is... Hmm... Yeah, yes, yes. Okay, I should have played all of my cards on the previous round. I thought that I might be able to save up my energy, but that is not the case. So that's good to know. All right, so can I... Yeah, I can place one up here. And this has just two damage remaining, and this does five damage. So I will just do two damage here and here, and I now have no more energy. So we'll just end the turn and hope that... Yeah, there we go. My train steward is doing a decent job there. Yeah, it, it seems like it was actually a good idea for me to place a unit up there and uh, place the uh, horned prince at the front because he actually has armor and armor seems to make quite a bit of a difference so i'm actually just going to be placing all these guys oh, i can't place them anywhere else okay i guess i'm going to place them round about here and we can restore ourselves as well i'm actually wondering whether anyone needs any healing yeah it seems like this guy needs healing so i guess i'll just heal him a little bit and then we can move on uh, it's a little bit problematic that I don't have a spell to eliminate the priest at the back there. But obviously, you know, if, that, if that's just how it is, then that's just how it is. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, there's a boss. Okay, his relentless ability means that the uh, combat will continue in this room until you or he is defeated. That is a wonderful mechanic. You know why? Because otherwise, after the first round of combat, he's just going to go up to the level, up to the level, up to the level, and then he's going to get to your pyre, and then he's going to be able to attack it. And you're probably not going to have enough damage to deal with him. So this is really cool. Okay, so let's see if we can do something here. All right, so I'm going to do two damage here, do two damage here, and two damage here. And then we should be okay to go to the next turn. There we go. Just wanted to eliminate that because it was getting a bit close for comfort for my liking. And look at how much damage we're doing. We're actually doing some pretty nice damage right here. Should have really given him region, to be honest. But I think we'll, we'll probably survive. As you can see, the boss literally only has 6 HP remaining. And it should be pretty easy for us to achieve a victory there. So, there we are. Yeah, I, I would have been able to probably beat him more if I had just used Restore on our Horned Prince. But the problem with that is that I didn't think my train steward at the very top level here, or one of the topper levels, uh, upper levels, should we say? Topper levels. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the upper levels would have actually made a difference. But yeah, there you go. I guess we'll just let him murder them. There we go. 
very nice indeed. And uh, yeah, we a two turn boss rush, boss rush. So I gain a 20% additional bonus from defeating the boss relatively quickly. But as I say, I probably, I think I probably could have defeated him on the first level if I had played the earlier rounds just that little bit more efficiently, perhaps. All right, so now, now we get to choose a card. We can ascend a unit, which basically allows us to move up a floor. Hmm, that actually seems pretty cool. What about this? Rage, apply rage six, plus two attack, I assume that is. Decreases every turn or deal uh, 2x damage to enemy units. So it basically spends the rest of your ember. The amount spent magnifies the results. That actually sounds really, really good. Mm, I'm going to do that, actually. I think that that is a very powerful card. We'll, we'll see if it actually turns out to be or not. Allied Clan Pack. Okay, let's have a look here. Enhance a unit with this. Mm, that might actually be kind of fun. Restore 10 health to a friendly unit. Deal damage to the front unit in a, equal to five times the amount he healed. Wow. Okay, that's actually kind of insane. And apply spikes. What do spikes do? When a unit with spikes is attacked, the attacker... Okay, you know what? I'm actually going to take Sharpen. I feel like Sharpen is going to be really good. But I probably should have taken the health one, because that actually does make it much, much more likely for a unit to stay alive. So we can also have a look at these things here. So we can choose where the monster train is going to go now. So you can either go to the Merchant of Steel, which allows our units to gain new powers. And we can also gain an Awoken unit... Or we can go to the Merchant of Magic and receive 75 coins. I think I'm going to go this way. Because I would like to get an Awoken uh, awoken card of some kind. Awoken Hollow. Summon gain 60 max health. Rejuvenate this. What? What? Okay, this is a pretty crazy, uh, crazy, guy, crazy guy right here. <laughs> going to take that guy, I guess. We'll see how that goes. And what about the Merchant of Steel? We can also go there and see what we can do. So we can actually remove a card from our deck if we want to make our deck just that little bit more efficient. So I'm thinking we're probably going to do that, but we could also upgrade a unit with something. And this this only costs us 20 gold. That's really quite amazing. Oh, wait a minute. Units can only be summoned on a floor if it has enough capacity. So upgrade a unit with this and that. Wow, that's that's pretty insane. So technically, I could give it more damage. So shall we upgrade a unit? We could upgrade my Awoken Hollow. Let's upgrade it. There we go. And let's upgrade it again, shall we? Let's make it into an absolute monster of a card. We have 60 gold remaining. So what I could do is I could remove a card from the deck. And we can have a look at our deck through here. So basically, what I can do is I can be like, okay, so I'd like to remove, you know, one of these torches, for example. Um... Because I don't think anyone's going to get past the Awoken Hollow at this point. <laughs> I mean, they might. But uh, yeah, I think I'm just going to leave it for the moment. And we'll see if there's anything else later down the line that might make more sense for us to spend some money on. All right, these spiked foes will make direct attacks more painful. Using spells from afar will let you fight without sacrificing your units. And we also have a number of other people here that we have to deal with. All right. Let's do it. And I, I, I mean, you can already tell the polish that the game has. It is just incredibly fun. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> are, are they serious with giving me the Awoken Hollow straight away? That is, that is pretty crazy. Okay, so wait a minute. Uh, yeah, I can only put those two on this floor. I had to make sure that we had that available. Ah, combat previews are now available. Uh, the preview number shows the amount of damage each unit will take during the next combat phase. A red X means the unit will be defeated. Okay, good to know. We're going to place this guy behind. Like so. It. How is anyone going to defeat this guy? Like, never in a million years, right? Never in a million years. Okay, so we're going to just use a restore on him so that he can rejuvenate. And as you can see, he's going <laughs> to... This is just insane. Okay, so we will probably do a rejuvenate on this guy as well. I actually don't know how long this lasts. Region 1. Which does one health per stack at the end of the turn. Oh, okay, yeah, so just one. Just last one turn. Well, that's not even that bad, I suppose. But as you can see, the Awoken is just absolutely beasting everything right now. Unfortunately, the uh, enemies at the very front here are doing quite a bit of damage, which is kind of annoying. But that's not too bad because we can now just place a unit up there, which is r r perfectly fine. You know, perfectly fine. Let's place a uh, region on that guy and we'll put, place a train steward up there. And then we'll end the turn. 
You know, I probably should have pl placed my Awoken at the front. That would have been much more advantageous, I think. Uh, I was a bit of an idiot in that case. Yes, I was a bit of an idiot there, but okay, well, never mind. I guess I can restore our Horned Prince. And uh, let's place the guy here. And eh, we'll just murder that one. There we go. Alright, not too bad. Not too bad. I, I kind of like the Awoken unit so far, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking we might try to push our deck into that direction if I can. Um, as you can see, our primary clan is currently the Hellhorned, and the allied clan is, is Awoken, so I, I'm not entirely sure if we can change that up a little bit. Oh, wow. This guy is looking pretty harsh. Alright. So... <laughs> Uh, this is going to be kind of interesting. I guess we're just going to sharpen the Awoken here. And we will do damage to the back line. And that's it. That's all I can do. That is kind of unfortunate. But, you know, they give you limited energy for a reason. Uh, th there's no way that this guy is going to be able to kill my Awoken right here. Just insanely powerful card immediately right there. Okay, so click the game speed button. Oh, okay, so we can actually increase the speed of the combat. I think it's fast enough for me, actually, at the moment, so I'm pretty happy with that. And there you go. Three turn boss rush. Not too bad. We did all right. And we do gain some additional packs here as well. So let's have a look. Mm, what do we want to do? Choose a card. Should we go for rage? No. What about piercing? Damage dealt by this card ignores armor and shields. Might be quite important. Gonna go for that. And we can also skip here as well if we want to. So we don't necessarily need to take these cards if we don't want to. The, the, this is the exact point that I'm going to take here. I think we're going to take the Restoration Detonation. I think it is just an absolutely insane synergy that we gain with our other unit. So we're going to take that. All right, so here we go. Where else can we go? Duplicate any card? <laughs> <laughs> Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Yes, I think you should be. Okay, so unfortunately, um, I could gain a Hellhorned unit by going this way, but I'm going to miss out on duplicating any card except our champion. So I'm going to go and duplicate our Awoken Hollow because it is crazy good. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to restore 20 Pyre Health. I actually don't think that that's necessary. So we're just going to go into the Concealed Caverns here. What does this actually do? Let's have a look. As you pass the train graveyard, you notice several of your fallen allies. Within the beasts of gnarled steel lie extinguished pyre shards. Even further inside the rubble, you can make out some last protected treasures. Perhaps if you were able to relight the pyre shards using some of your own, the trains would reveal their value. Aha, so we can gain a heartstone, upgrade a unit with plus 25. When your pyre kills a unit, restore 5 pyre health. Friendly units get... Plus 10 and Heartless. No. What? Why would you do this? Cannot be healed? Surely not. I'm going to take this. And we will be upgrading <laughs> one of these guys. Oh yeah. That is insane. Okay. The Pyre Shard flickers to life. The treasure within now revealed as the Pyre removes its final defense. Yet as you leave, the Pyre Shards goes out once more. This time for good. You are all that is left. Alright, so let us depart. This is the only damage I've taken so far, which is pretty good, but obviously this is the first initial level, and I can actually now restore some pyre health if I wanted to, so that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with how our deck is shaping up, actually. Oh, who's this? Okay, heavily armored creations protect this ex-professor in his quest to safeguard Seraph and the Winged. Okay. Plating seal. Constructed explosives enter with damage shield. Damage shield nullifies the next source of damage. So this is going to be quite problematic for my Awoken. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to place them on two separate floors. And we'll see how that goes. Uh, this, uh, yes, here we go. Daedalus is the strongest boss you've faced yet. He moves between floors freely, but can be attacked if you clear out other enemies on that floor. Okay, so he's going to be standing there. This bomb has a triggered ability and will explode on its turn, dealing damage. Mouse over units with the purple trigger icon to see the details of their abilities. Alright, so on turn, despawn and deal 10 damage to the front enemy unit. Aha, uh -huh. so this is this is kind of problematic. 
Mm, I'm gonna have to do something here. So... Uh, hmm. Th yeah, this is this is somewhat problematic. Okay, we're gonna place the Awoken Hollow down here so that it can deal with these guys. Some of them, that is. And we'll try and murder the guys in the back. And we're gonna have to do something like place the... Yeah, Hornbreaker Prince will be able to deal with this, I hope. And then we can put the train steward down here as well, behind the Awoken. And that seems, that seems good to me. Ah, mm, yes, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. Uh, yes, good on me for being not so good. Mm, very nice. Okay, so let's see where, where he's going to place the next one. Let's go, it's going to go up there. Right. Okay, so I can actually do piercing here. It ignores armors and shields. This is exactly the reason why I took this card. Boom. That is easy enough. Let's put an another Awoken Hollow up here. And then we can also use Restore. And we're going to use Restore on this guy. I mean, look at this guy. He has 126 maximum HP. Who's going to get by him? I don't know. But hopefully no one. We'll see. Nice. 25 damage. Very good. Yeah, unfortunately, the enemy does appear to be quite uh, fast, shall we say. Aha, there's another damage shield right there. Okay, so we can do spikes, we can do restore. I could potentially eliminate this, but as you can see, where, uh, it triggers on this unit's turn, actually. So if I eliminate it before, it won't do that damage. There you go, easy enough. And now I have another little bit, so I could potentially restore this one's HP if I want to, or I could restore this one's HP, probably this one's HP, because let's face it, um, the one up at the top is probably not going to get a huge amount of action. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm a bit worried about this. I'm a bit worried about this. Okay, so let's see. Train Steward is going to attack twice. Yeah, we don't have the ability to deal with this. Hmm. This, this, is, this is slightly problematic. Yeah, that's exactly my point. That is actually very problematic. But I did use the Train Steward to save our Horned Prince, which, in my opinion, is a pretty decent use of it. Um, but now these guys are going through to the next level, and we're having some problems. I maybe should have put my Awoken down here with the Horned Prince. That might have made more sense. Yeah, might have made more sense. But we're going to kill this with our Piercing ability and uh, deal to, uh, damage to the front enemy equal to that. Okay, this is actually really nice. So we're just going to do this and boom. Look at how much damage that was. That's just absolutely crazy. And now, unfortunately, this guy's going to die. We're going to lose our Hornbreaker Prince here. We can't really do much about that. So I suppose I'm just going to heal. We are doing damage. Ah. Yeah, that's, that's pretty bad. That is pretty bad. I have a feeling that our Pyre is probably going to take damage now. Unless, if we can get maybe like a Train Steward up there. Yeah, Train Steward. Or I can just use Torch. Yeah, I can just use Torch on this guy. He's done. And what's he doing now? What is he actually doing right here? Okay, I'm not entirely sure what he's what he's preparing to do. Oh, 40, le 40, 40 damage? Is he going to take 40 damage? Maybe he is going to do that. Okay, well, I guess we'll just heal. And we can just heal here as well. Don't know how much that's really going to do. There we go. Protect the pyre, thank you. Ah, yes, he is actually attacking himself now instead of using bombs. So, yeah, he is nowhere near going to do anything to our guy right now. Our guy is just absolutely murdering. And boom. And we actually gain a rare pack and uh, we can draft a primary or allied clan unit and we have major enhancements as well. Okay, that was obviously the hardest boss that we have so far fought. Ooh, now look at this. Restore friendly units to full health. Wow, I can only imagine how crazy that is, especially considering it is a zero cost card. 
Also deal damage to the front enemy equal to the 15 to 15 times the number of imp units in your deck. I don't have any imp units at the moment, so this is basically pointless for me. But channel song, draw a unit and enhance it with this. Can only be played once per battle. Hmm, I'm not a big fan of that. I'm going to take Unleash the Wildwood. That seems like such a powerful card. Thorned Hollow. Summon, gain 40 max HP, rejuvenate. Wow. And gain spikes. When a unit with spikes is attacked. Okay, yeah. I could go... Oh, wait. I could go for Demon Fiend. But I need four energy to be able to use Demon Fiend. What a crazy card this is. Okay. I have no idea what to go for right now. I'm thinking we might go for Husk Hermit, actually. Because you may think to yourself, Oh, wait a minute. This is not that good. But it can sweep every enemy unit and that means it can it can sweep the back line as well so i think we're going to take that and now we can get some enhancements as well okay wow this is actually kind of amazing so you get plus one energy or plus one ember per turn or you can get more capacity or you can draw one additional card i'm actually going to go for the ember that just seems like a no-brainer for me at the moment being able to play more cards is always the way to go in my opinion Okay, so forge your units to gain new powers. I have a number of uh, number of pieces of gold. Select and remove up to two cards from your deck. Gain an artifact. Gain an awoken unit. I think we might want to do that. Let's do it. All right, so we're going to remove two cards from our deck. I think I'm going to be removing... <sighs> I know I took sharpen earlier, but I feel like two ember cost for it is quite expensive. Mm, it's got spikes four. I'm, I'm not entirely sure what that means, to be to be fair. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know what? I'm going to remove one torch. And I might remove the sharpen ability as well. I'm going to do that. And then we can also gain an artifact. Units gain an extra upgrade slot. Region restores plus one health per stack. Uh-huh. Okay. I'm not entirely sure which one is best. We'll take the region one because that seems to be the thing that really helps our Awoken units to be really good. And I will go for the Husk Hermit once again. And then we can upgrade our champion with something. Whoa, now this is pretty crazy. Okay, so we can either upgrade the armor and we can gain multi-strike again, another multi-strike. Or we can just improve the amount of damage that we deal per hit. Ah, uh, this seems the best in my opinion. I'll go for that. And then we'll move on to the next battle. Alright, oh, okay, hello there. Clipped Tormentors. They might be low level, low level recruits of the Clipped, but they'll overload you with penance if you don't take them out quickly. Activating this trial will make the battle more difficult, but you'll earn an extra reward. Oh, okay, yes, I will definitely turn that on. Non-boss enemy units enter with spikes four. Sure, I don't have a problem with that. That sounds fun. All right, let's try it out. All right, yep, there we go. That's absolutely fine. Not a problem at all. Okay, wow, th this guy actually has 50 armor. What? <laughs> <laughs> that might be a bit problematic, but uh, thankfully we do have our Hornbreaker Prince, who is able to deal pretty significant damage at the very start. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to place him there. Maybe we want to place our Awoken Hollow at the front so that our uh, Prince can just do massive damage. I think we'll probably do that. And then we'll do Restoration Detonation, which will hopefully murder this enemy. Yep, it, 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 well, it removed a huge amount of its armor, which is all that we really wanted. And uh, we will might, we might as well just use a little bit of uh, rejuvenation here. There we go. Sounds good to me. These guys are never going to survive. <laughs> Not in a million years. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, oh, who's that? What, it, what, a collector? Triggers on... Okay, so we can actually attack this and gain 75 gold on death aha uh -huh. and it flees from battle okay so it triggers for after combat so it flees from battle if not rooted or dazed i should be able to deal damage to it and there you go so we now gain 75 gold okay that's actually good to know that there are things like that and we can do some husk hermits as well if we want to on the next stage guess we'll probably do that 
<laughs> no one's gonna get by these guys. I mean, no one with, you know, like, really small, small-ish units. But, uh, yeah, these guys are literally just gonna murder everything. Because here's the thing. If they actually get by, these Husk Hermits will take care of anything else. Because all of the hardier, tankier units are on you know, the front lines, and the Husk Hermits will be able to basically deal with anything weaker that gets past, which is exactly what we want. So what I can do now is I will put my other Awoken at the top here, and I guess I will just continue. I could restore this guy. He might take, yeah, he's going to take fatal damage, so it's good that I healed him there. And we could actually do some damage here, so we don't take any ourselves. But do I do I care about that? Maybe, maybe not really. I'm not sure. Okay, well we'll just place a train steward over there, and then we'll just end the turn. Okay, let's see what happens here. I hope that they uh, they they do. Ah, yes, there we go. My horned prince is dead. Ah, yes, that's not exactly great, is it? Okay, hmm. We might have some issues then. Can do 8 damage. That's not going to do enough. Train Steward only does 5 damage. Guess I'll just do a little bit of damage here. And we can restore him a little bit more. Train Steward, I guess, we'll put out there. And we can do some damage if we want to. But it's only 5. But I guess we might as well. There's no one else to use it on. Okay, this might be problematic. Or maybe not. Okay, so we can heal our people to full health. I mean, literally, look at this. If I literally use this, this guy is going to heal to full HP. I mean, that's it's crazy. That's crazy. I'm going to do it. Why not? There you go. He's at 133 HP. He needs a, a little bit of a weapon boost, in my opinion. That's probably going to be something that I'll be on the lookout for next. And can I place anyone up here? No. I, I so, Okay, I, I can't place anyone in the pyre chamber, as you can see. So you do need to make the most of your space. Okay, well, that's fine. Not a problem. I think we'll be okay, because uh, my Awoken at the next stage will probably deal with that guy pretty easily. Oh, hello there. This guy does 12 damage per hit. This might be problematic, but as you can see, we have Restoration Detonation. So, what we're going to do is if these guys die and these guys die, I'm just going to use Restoration Detonation, and then he's just going to get murdered for massive amounts of damage. Actually, I hope that works, actually. I think it might. Okay, so we do five damage. We're gonna do that to one of these guys. And we might as well do a lid. Actually, you know what? It doesn't even make, it doesn't even make much sense to do that. So I think I'm gonna just go, just do some region there. I could actually restore him now and just kill this so that this guy doesn't get any additional damage on us. But I kind of wanted to save it for the boss. So, I mean, I, I guess I could just use this on the boss. Yeah, I think that's I think that seems pretty good. I think that seems all right. Okay, so now obviously because this is the boss, they're going to just continue attacking. I think we're probably going to achieve victory on the first on the first level here, I don't think... Are they going to be able to kill my guy? Maybe? No, I don't think so, actually. Nope. <laughs> nope, that is it. That is indeed a victory for us. Wow, pretty crazy. Alright, so there you go. We uh, also got a trial bonus. We got a boon of the blacksmith, as well as a clan pack, an allied clan pack and everything. And we can now... Oh, wow. Yeah, that's actually pretty cool. We're going to collect that. And what do we have here? So, we, yeah, so if you wanted to, you could have gone for, like, imps and things like that. Personally, I haven't really um, done that so far, so I'm, I'm not going to start now. I'm going to just go for fortify instead. And... Ooh. Enhancer unit sounds fun, but it's only three damage, but three damage might actually be kind of useful. Deal five damage to the front and then draw an additional card. That might actually be kind of useful as well. Mm, I'm going to go for Steel Enhancer, I think. 
All right, so now we have entered a new area and we can decide where we want to go. So I could go to the concealed caverns or I could go and uh, <laughs> forge our units to gain new powers. I think that's actually going to be something I'll do now because I have 310 gold. That's pretty ex pretty impressive. You know? Okay, so Battlestone. Oh, wow. Attacks before enemy units? Okay, hello there. You are going to... Oh, oh wait a minute. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. I understand now. I did not realize this beforehand, but there are actually upgrade slots on your cards. And as a result, as you can see right here, I have already upgraded all of these slots uh, that are currently available. So that's actually good to know. I will be increasing our Husk Hermit's damage, I think. There we go. And we can also upgrade a unit with spikes four, and I suppose I'll do one of the husk hermits with that. And then we can also re-roll and refresh the offered goods if we wanted to, so that might actually be kind of fun too. Uh, we can also purge a card from our deck. Do we want to do that? Mm, not really right now. Let's let's randomize. Oh, look at this! Wow. Yeah, this is this is pretty insane. Okay, so a large stone would be pretty fantastic for the uh, for one of the husk hermits here. I mean, just look at this. 18 damage, 70 HP. I mean, how can you say no to that? We're going to do more damage with this guy. 28 damage now to everything on the level. Can you imagine? That's pretty crazy. Uh, shall we even upgrade one of these? I mean, we have a lot of gold, but I don't think it's... I, I don't know whether it's necessary, to be honest. Okay, so... Now we can remove up to two cards from our deck if we want to. Personally, I feel like every card that has a zero cost is basically something that I'll, I'll end up keeping no matter what. And I'm a bit worried about me not using many of these train stewards. So I'm actually going to, you know, get, get rid of a couple of these. There we go. And we can also now gain 75 coins and another battle awaits us. However, that's going to be it for this episode. If you would like to check out the game, there is a link in the description. But otherwise, if you'd like to see more of Monster Train from me, then also let me know down in the comments. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.